Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Trash Pandas. It's ages eight and up, two to four players, and it takes 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to collect and then stash cards. At the end of the game, you flip over the piles so everyone can see them and compare who has the most of each type of cards and the points are indicated on the cards. You award them appropriately, tally up your totals, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Game setup. To begin, shuffle all of the cards, and then you deal out three to whoever you've decided your first player will be, four to the next player, and then five to the player after that. If you have a fourth player, you give them six cards. Uh, we are playing a three-player game today. You can look at your cards, but they are a secret to the other players. Uh, this person will go first, and all you do on your turn is you start by rolling this die, and then you take whichever token corresponds with it. Take a token, and it's kind of a push your luck thing where you keep on rolling, get another token, and you get to choose. Do you keep on rolling and trying to get another uh, token, or um, do you stop at a certain point and just resolve these tokens? Because if you roll again and you get something you already have, unless you have a special card, we'll uh, talk about that here in a minute, if this happens, you have busted and your turn is over. So then you return all of these. If that happens, you get to take a card. You get a, uh, a courtesy card anyway. And then your turn is over and play proceeds to the next player. So let's show what happens if you roll the die and things go a little bit better. So this person starts rolling. It's their turn. They take this token. They roll again take this token, roll again, take this token. And at this point, they're going to uh, stop and just resolve these tokens. I will show you what all the cards do in a minute, but I think it's nicer to just start with talking about the tokens and then move on to the cards. They have a handy cheat sheet that you should have out on the table, which is great for the first few rounds of play that tells you what each token does. Uh, I'm just going to go through what they have on the card. If you had this one, you get to take two cards from the stack and put them into your hand. Uh, a key part of this is you can stash these cards on your turn, but you can't use them for anything else. So it's important to kind of differentiate them from the other cards in your hand. You might look at them and then put them to the side uh, so you can keep them separate from your cards. That's what we generally do. Next, you can um, stash up to two cards. So for the cards in your hand, this is very important. This is how you uh, win the game. You need to stash in order to get the most points. So again, you can look at your cards in your hand. You can stash. Um, I'm, I'm just going through all of these. Clearly, they haven't gotten this one, so they wouldn't have gotten to draw two cards. So we'll leave them over here. But, uh, but they would have this one available to them. And uh, they can choose to pick two cards, and again, I'll talk about the cards in a second, and um, put them off face down, nobody gets to see this, and have a separate pile where they have stashed these cards, and this is where you get your points at the end of the game. Uh, the next tile, if you collect this, you can choose to either uh, draw a card or you can choose to stash if you have something that you can stash. Some of them, you there is zero value to stashing, so you wouldn't do that. Uh, but you have a choice with that one. Uh, this one, you can steal a card from somebody else's hand. Uh, they don't get to pick it. They shuffle up their cards, hold them out where you can't see, and you would pick one from their hand. Uh, you can look at it, but again, it is a new card. You've gotten that turn, so... Um, it would be placed over here with your other cards that you have, but you can't do anything with them besides stash them. Uh, this card, you uh, the, the kind of recycle sign, uh, if you get that one, you get to trade it in for another one um, at the end of your turn once you're done rolling the die and you have all your tokens. You get to trade this in for another one that you like. So if you'd gotten this one, you would have gotten to trade it in for one of these two. And finally, uh, the uh, mask one, you get to uh, draw the top card and show it to everybody. And this goes into your hand, this card, and people have the option of stashing one of whatever this is. If it's applicable to stash, you, there are a couple cards that you don't stash. And 
if they choose to stash, they can only stash one even if they have a couple blamos. And uh, if they choose to do that for each player who stashes one card, you get to draw an additional card and you don't have to show anybody that card. Um, and they also have to stash the card upright because that way you know they're actually um, stashing the one that just came up and not just whatever card they feel like. So this is what their hand would look like at the end of their turn. Um, this is their stash pile and you wouldn't be able to see this. So they have this down, stash pile is separate. A couple notes on uh, rolling the die and taking tokens. Once it's time to resolve the tokens, you can do them in any order you like. It's generally good to, if you're going to draw from the pile, do that earlier rather than after you've stashed items. And uh, if you are very lucky and have cards that allow you, you're just, you're just really good at rolling the die and you get all of the tokens, uh, you, there's a couple things. One, this uh, one doesn't do any good. It, there's not a token to trade it with. So it doesn't do anything this round. But as part of your turn, you first resolve all of these tokens and then you get to put them all back and roll the die again and you can get up to three additional tokens. That's what they cap you at. You can't just keep on going through again and again. So if you got, um, you rolled again, you just were doing great and you got this one and then you got this one and this one, then you have to stop at that point if you, this is part two of your rolling for your turn and then you trade this for whichever one you wanted resolve those actions, and then your turn would be over and play would proceed to the next player. All right, it is this player's turn and I've turned their hand upright because it is time to talk about the cards and what they do. Uh, most of the cards have little uh, a trophy on it and silver and bronze and these indicate when stashed at the end of the game when you're comparing how many points you get for each of their first, second, or third, um, most amount of that card in your stashed pile. There's also other information on the cards, like how many they are. there are in the deck is in parentheses um, over here underneath the name of it. And they also tell you what they do on each card. All of the cards have specific times in which they can be played. And for specific purposes, uh, the exceptions to that are shiny and fish kind of have a little more flexibility in when you would use them. So if it's this player's turn, at the beginning of their turn, they can play shiny out here on the table and it allows them to steal a stashed card from another player. So there's only one person here who has a stashed card and they get to take that card and put it into their hand. Uh, in the rules, they can be blocked with a doggo or a kitta, uh, but we'll just say, um, they played it out here and then they get to um, draw a card. It's put in their hand and then they can use it, this hand, the card that they have drawn from this other person's stashed set because only the cards that you get after you're resolving your actions can only be used to stash. Uh, you can't use them in play. This one can be used in play. So this card can be used at the beginning of your turn, before you've even rolled the die, or after when you're done and you're in the in the process of resolving your die, you can still place this card out here. Um, make sure you stash cards and just don't play them a bunch though because you, you have to stash a bunch in order to win at this game. Next we have Fish, which is the only other card you can play uh, before even rolling the die on your turn. And in fact, it may be quite strategic to do so because this allows you to search through the discard pile, which ends up having quite a few cards in it pretty quickly. And you can select any card from there and place it into your hand. And if applicable, you can use it on your turn. So you might go through and get one of the cards that helps you if you get a bad roll here, but you would only have a shiny. So you could place this out here and get shiny back in his hand. Again, this card can be placed out here at the beginning of your turn, or if you play a couple good cards and want to get them back at the end of the turn, you could choose to do that then and play your fiche and get a card back if you liked. Next up, we have Nanners. 
People use a lot of nanners in this game. They are very important for winning. You, if you roll and you get um, this tile and then you roll again and oops, you got the exact same one, you should bust at that point unless you're able to play a nanners and you can just ignore that last, last dice roll and stop at this point and just resolve what you have. On that note, another good card that is very similar is if you, it's this person's turn and they still have their nanners, they were just starting, and they roll this, they get this, and then they roll again and oops, they get this again, you can play a blammo, which instead of stopping, you get to re-roll. And so hopefully you get something else and then you can keep on going or stop after that, but you can't just stop at that point. You have to re-roll the die and try again. Okay, let us say play has proceeded on to this player. They're busy rolling the die and taking their tokens and they get about three and decide, oh, I wanna be safe and stop. Well, not if somebody else has a yum yum they can play on you. You play this on somebody else when they say they have stopped, they wanna stop rolling. Well, then you make them continue to roll. They have to roll one more time if you've played that. And then hopefully you want them to uh, go bust and then they'd have to put all these back and get one. Uh, or they just keep on going and get something else. And um, then they say, okay, I'm stopping now. Trade it for something they like. And then they would get to resolve these and uh, their turn would be over after that. Although they might want to use their... Mm, pie card, which allows them to resolve a token twice, which can be really great when you're wanting to stash a bunch, or if you just want to get a bunch of cards. So you could put this over here, and if you then played this card, you wouldn't just draw two, you would draw four cards, which is pretty great. And the last two cards to know about are the doggo and the kitte. So let's say this person is resolving this one, which allows them to steal from another player, and they choose this person. Well, this person can play their doggo card, which stops them, and then they get to take two cards from here and put them in their hand instead. Or they could choose this lucky person also had a kitte, kitte. <laughs> and if you play this instead of them stealing from you, haha, you steal from them. But watch out because that counts as a stealing attempt. So they could play their own doggo or kitte card against you if that happens. And also the kitta, if it, it steals the way that you were trying to steal. So if you were trying to steal from their hand, then the kitta tries to steal from your hand. But if you play a shiny card and are trying to steal from their stashed cards over here, if they play the kitta to defend that, then you would steal it with, we'll say they had some stashed cards over here. So then you would get to use this to steal from one of their stashed cards instead. Game end. The end of a game is triggered when somebody uh, on their turn, let's say um, they roll again and they get this and they decide to stop and they resolve this first token and they draw the last card and there's no cards left in the draw pile. Uh, they get to resolve their final two tokens and play out their turn and then it's time to have everybody score their stash piles. So once that player has finished resolving their tokens, everyone discards whatever is left in their hand into the discard pile, flips over their stashed cards, and then compares and points are awarded. I've put out each player's stashed cards and put a little uh, token in between so we can see whose hand is whose. Uh, to start, it's pretty clear if you have the most of a type, you have won um, first prize for that and gotten the points for it. For Nanners, this person would have seven points and then there is none awarded to second or third. So even though this person stashed one, they wouldn't get any points for that. This person gets seven. Uh, in the event of a tie, things get a little interesting. Uh, these players both have two fiche and according to the rules, that means each of them get one point less than what is listed on the card for that. So they, they would each get four points. And then they've tied for first, this person gets second place. And so these person, these people each get four, this person gets three points because they are in second place with one fiche card. Blamos are awarded one point each. Uh, and for this, for Yum Yum, 
they would have the most with one and have four points and then nobody else is awarded points. If you haven't collected any of that, you can't collect any points for that. So they don't both get second prize with uh, zero yum yum cards. They would just get zero points and that would not, the points for this for second would not be awarded. Same thing for shiny. They're the only person, so they would get three points. And some of these, uh, you kind of want to keep track of how many are in the deck and how many you've collected and how many you've seen because this, they had three cards and got first place for this, so they got six points, but nobody else had any. So in theory, they could have used one or two more in gameplay and not had to stash them and they still would have gotten the same amount of points. So for this game, this player would have won with 13 points. So that's how to play Trash Pandas. It feels like there's a lot going on, but it's all actually pretty simple. So it's a great choice for a family game night. Check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother. <laughs>